Right, I've just made this video to try and help again. I've got a 2015 Corsa E. Corsa E, not a D. Whenever I put into Google Corsa E, I get, did you mean Corsa D? No, I didn't. That's why I put in Corsa E. And I've been, I'm going to do this job. I've got to change two glow plugs. And they're very, very awkward to do. And I wondered if I could do it or not. So I went on and there is one more video about doing the course at eGlow plugs. And it's not very good at all, to be honest. So I thought I'd make my own to try and help others out. OK, so as I show you what I did, if you disagree or if you've got a better way of doing it, put something in the comments or something. But do us a favour and be constructive. Don't don't tell me I'm an idiot. I already know that. So anyway, so I'm going to go through what I did. Now, the good news is before we go any further, as I understand it, the main difference between the Corsa D and the Corsa E is that the D has got the turbo in front of the engine in the way a bit, and the E has got the turbo and the DPF in the way, very much in the way. Now, the good news is you don't have to remove them. It's very, very fiddly to do it without removing them, but removing them is just a hassle. Just, just don't bother. Uh, but I'll show you what I did and... Watch the video all the way through first and then because it will save you time. You can fast forward if you want, but I think you benefit by watching all of it. OK, here we go. So here we are with the start of the problem. Now, if I turn the ignition on. It says service vehicle soon and I cancel it. Now, I looked that up on the internet, and the consensus was that it was the air mass sensor. And I'll show you that now. Here it is. Look, dead easy to change. Just two bolts, and it changes. I got that for just under 25 quid off of eBay. But it turned out that that wasn't the problem. So I went back to square one with this the old ELM 27 you plug it in just under the dash it's the OBD2 protocols look I bought that ages ago it's a Bluetooth one but back then you couldn't get software that would cancel the fault codes but you can now there's other videos on YouTube show you how to use these and I recommend that you have a look but using this I found the fault codes that said that uh, glow plugs 2 and 3 uh, didn't have a complete circuit so <clears throat> I cancelled the codes and then turned the ignition off and then turned them back on again and the fault codes came back again. So I knew that was the that was what it was. Sometimes if you cancel the co the fault codes, it can be a glitch in some of the sensors. So I know that uh, even the professionals, they sometimes just cancel the fault codes and then see if the problems uh, persist. Uh, because sometimes you know it's a false reading but anyway so we decided it was plugs two and three right so getting on with it um i've replaced in number two and number three number two's awkward number three is very awkward i've already had a couple of dummy runs so i sort of know what i'm doing buy your your plugs by the engine code i I bought a couple off of eBay and got the wrong ones and had to send them back. Cost me three quid to send them back. So I got new ones from GSF. Um, so just make sure my, my engine code is B13DTE. And, they, and the plugs I got were 8 mil. The other thing you can do is buy one of these online. And I ordered this online and uh, the delivery date came through and it took ages. The plugs came through first, and then this was going to be about a week later, and I got impatient, and I couldn't wait, so I went out and bought these from Screwfix for 12 quid, so that was 8 quid, they were 12 quid. But I did a dummy run with these, and you can do it with these, and I'll show you, I'll show you the gist of how you do it with these. If you haven't got one of them and you don't want to get one, you can do it with these. And if you've got one of these, or you can get these cheaper than Screwfix somewhere. But anyway, ordered that. Say so took a week. That's the laser one. Fairly easy to find. Nine mil. Um, you can do it with them. I'll show you show you the difference in a minute. 
I've also got a set of quarter drive, this is all quarter drive by the way, quarter drive Halfords um, guaranteed for life socket set, which is that ratchet, that extension, that universal drive, and one short 10 mil socket you need. Um, I got and this one was one from an old set, so I got two extensions which came in handy. You need long nose pliers for pulling the caps off the top of the plugs. You, there's no uh, clips or anything. You just get that on the get that on the plug, give it a good tug, but just be careful. Uh, you need the long nose screwdriver if you're using these, and I'll demonstrate that in a bit. You also need some spanners, which I haven't got out. Just bear with. Right, as you'll see later, we've got a very awkward 10 mil bolt to get out. And you need, I've got a couple of combos here. And this one, well, this one's one I had ages ago. I bent it. It's 10 mil one end and 11 the other. Um, you need a ring spanner, not one of these. I mean, you can try and use that, but you won't get on very well. A bin it you want one of these a ring us because it's so awkward you can only move it fraction each time you'll see that as we go through the video so that's what you need right here's the problem you can see the heat shroud you can see everything's there and it's how difficult it is um, what they suggest that you do see there's plug number one and that's fairly easy to get to by the look of it what they suggest you do is to warm the engine up and spray the plugs with uh, easing oil. Some suggest WD-40. I used some other stuff, which I'll show you now. I was lucky enough to have this from my father-in-law's garage, Arrow Chemicals. It's actually penetrating oil and it's got graphite in it as well, which is a very good lubricant. Uh, the downside of it is it's black and it stains everything, including your fingers and your skin, and it stinks like the devil. But if you can get any, it's really good stuff. It's the graphite that makes it good. Right, before I show you the next bit of why you need the screwdriver, just to show you, if you use the universal drive and the extended socket, it's obviously a lot longer than this one. And that leads to the problem I'm about to show you. Once you've got the the plug loose and undone all the threads, there's not enough room to pull this out. You can't get it because it's it's like that. It's obviously got that in it. It's like that. And you, you haven't got enough room to pull this out. So you have to split it there with the screwdriver, which I'll show you. Okay, now this is what the screwdriver is for. Now, this is just set up for demonstration purposes because I can't show you in the in the engine because it's just too dark and I can't get the camera in there. But imagine that this socket is now on the glow plug in the engine and it's just cylinder number three. Number two is fairly straightforward. You just get it with the long nose pliers. But this is number three where it's really awkward. You unscrew the plug until it's loose in the thread. So you're trying to get it out, okay? So it's not in the block anymore, it's loose in the thread. But you can't get all this out, there's not the room. So what you do is you have to, well, you don't have to, this is what I did. Get your screwdriver in there and pull this universal joint out, like, like, watch this is where it all goes wrong. Whoops. like ooh, that okay so now I can get this out now you still can't get that what you need then is you have to reach into the engine with or down into the thing with them and pull it out like that and if you drop it hopefully it'll drop through to the bottom and you pick it up off the floor but you just don't drop it Anyway, that's the idea so you can get the plug out. Right, just briefly before we start, here's the heat shield. And you've got to get this off. And there's just four bolts. There's these two, well, two nuts on the top there and there. And then a bolt there. And then there's one I removed during a dummy run. And I've not put it back in because it's a bit awkward. So, And it's in at 90 degrees down there.
Now, look at these little buggers. There's a row of them there, 10 mil, they're only short ones, and they've got torques down the middles, but if you can get a torques in there, then good luck to you. Uh, there's the one that you need to remove, not that one, the one down the back there that's hold, holding up the plug. It's just stopping the plug from coming up so that we can get it out. I'll just stick my finger there so you, you can see it anyway. I didn't think you could see it this clear. So you've got to whip that out, and what I do is clean up the threads before I put it back in. And uh, as I say, that is the worst, and it's just a fiddle with these spanners. You little bit at a time, and then getting your fingers in there. And here we are, look, I've already put it back together. Well, I did actually film putting it back together, but I thought, well, that's boring. And to be honest, if you've got that far, then you should be able to work out how to put it all back together. But it's not that difficult once you've done that. However, I would recommend that before you start this job, that you take that heat shield off and have a look underneath it. You need to do it really to get the penetrating oil onto the plugs because it's in the way. And then have a good look around, see if you can get a spanner onto that little 10 mil nut, and see if you can get your sockets down onto the plugs. Um, it, it, that's what I did a couple of times anyway to work it all out. Apart from that, thanks for watching. I hope it's been useful to you. Please comment if you feel like it or want to give us a like. It's nice to receive comments because we don't make any money out of these. I don't get enough views to be monetized, so I don't get anything for this. I just like to be helpful. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.